everybody, welcome back to Hear Our Voices, where we tell stories, give resources, and change the narrative of homelessness. This is your host, Kay Did. Guys, I'm sorry about my voice. You know, I've been struggling with some stuff, and I hopefully got some stuff fixed last week. So hopefully when you hear the next couple of podcasts, I will be together. I'm not sure when this podcast is actually going to come out. Right now it's October, I want to say 4th, right? And right now we have started Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And I just want you not just to only think about it in October, but think it, about it every t time in the year, to be honest, because every couple of minutes a person's getting hurt and by domestic violence in general. And as we know, domestic violence can happen in many different ways. It could be physical, it could be mental, it could be financial and things like that. So let's all try to be better people and make us see the signs in ourselves was not the greatest things or being a greater person and make sure we can be the person who can have change in others' lives. And, you know, but yes, but please follow us on social media. We know we have TikTok, we have the gram, we have, we call it YouTube. We're all over, we're doing different things. I go out to a good amount of like community events. So if you see me out there, don't be afraid. Probably if you just only watch me, um, listen to me on here, you don't know what I look like, but everything will be on link in the link down below. If you want to follow me on social media, and see what I actually look like. So you might see me in the street and you can say hi. Um, <laughs> and you can meet me, ask me questions, anything like that. If you do want to be in the podcast, guys, please, please, please DM me. I would say Instagram is easier than doing TikTok. And just tell me what you want to put on here for this story. If you're a person under, if you're a person in homelessness or housing insecurity, doubled up, things like that, eviction, you qualify to be on here with you or your child um, or your many people in your family who experienced it with you and you can actually look at also the criteria for you your child has to be under 21 when it's happening anywhere in the u.s if you're a person a provider who has or a nonprofit, things like that who wants to give resources to families in any way it could be legal it could be um helping with housing subsidies stuff like that you can definitely come on here or you could just send me over the resource and we could add we can add it to our resource packet. So let's get into the podcast today. Usually when we, I'm going to tell you just a little bit, not too much. Usually we have mostly people with, who came on as adults, right? Who are in the shelter or going through this housing problem. And you never really get to hear the perspective of the kids. And our requirement, as you know, for the podcast is for people, parents, caregivers with children under 21, because that's the path standard in New York City. And the kids' voices a lot of times get lost, right? And they get affected so much by the parent, the things that their parents are going through or caregiver is going through, right? And I want to make sure that we don't lose the voice of the child. This person is an adult now, so they'll be able to articulate things better than when they were a child. Not saying that kids cannot do that, because kids nowadays are very, very smart. But if you have a child also who wants to give their opinion, they don't have to show their face, they don't have to give their name, but we'd love to hear from them too to see how the system could be better and how we could he hear their voice too and make their lives a little bit better. Um, so our guest today is Kay and he's also gonna tell his story. So I have a question, of course. <laughs> What's your question? What, what age did this all happen for you and how did it start for you? Well, it happened when I was 16. Right. But it started, it started because like my mom went to jail and my grandmother took care of us until she came home from prison. And when that, that happened, my mom came home, you know, yeah, everybody went their own. And and one of the things my mom wanted was her own place, her own apartment to raise us and things like that. So when she came home, she got herself situated. And within like the first couple of weeks, we ended up going to a shelter. We had to go all the way to the Bronx, woke up super early. It was me, my sister, and my little brother. At the time, he probably was about, I'd say like six. Um... Yeah, so we wake up super early. We go to the Bronx. We just was, everything was just in a blur. Everything happened so fast, and it was more like when you get to the spot. Like when I was there, it was like an assembly line. Like how you say it, you got people just calling numbers and 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 and, and things like that. Like and you go and speak to people, you tell them what's going on, you tell them what happened and things like that. And then you basically there all day. You feel me? You see different families going through the same thing. Kids as well. I remember my mom. She went and got us some food to eat while we waited for them to call our name and numbers and things. 
and it was another family next to us, and I, I, I believe they were hungry because they was looking at us eat, and they would not stop looking. So I just like, I don't know their situation, they don't know our situation, but I could share my sandwich with them, and that's what we did. They ended up placing us in in Bushwick on um, on Putnam, and that's and we had we got there, we had our own our own apartment there, you know, we had our own rooms. It was three of us. We had bunk beds and things like that. We had a doorman that used to make us sign in and out. I just, I, I remembered it, you know, but it wasn't, I used to say, I, I can't speak for my mom because I don't know how she took it. I, I didn't really like it. I just felt like I was being uprooted because I grew up with most of my childhood with my grandma and now it's time for me to leave. That that really like broke my heart, you know. I was I was hurt behind it. I ain't even going to lie. I was crying a little bit, things like that. Me and my sister and my brother. But when we got to the space, it wasn't a bad space, but it wasn't a good space neither, you know? The floors were uneven. Like, if we lay on the floor, we could see the mice crawling behind the radiators and things like that. Yeah. But, yeah, but that's how I got there. Um, I, I remember our curfew being 7. Um, I, we, I remember our curfew being 9.30. So we used to go out and then, um, you know, just have fun during the day. And then when it's time to go, I got to tell my friends later. And they're like, why are you leaving so early? But I can't tell them I'm in the shelter because I ain't want to be like the odd man out. My friends make fun of me and things like that. So, you know, I just used to leave. We used to just walk to the shelter, sign in, get some food, and then call it a night. You have any more questions? No. I have so much to deep to put into that. I really commend. I know you say you didn't like how your mother took you from your grandma. I definitely understand that, like, Basically, your grandmother was your parent. That's what it seems like from what I'm listening, right? Yeah. But I also can commend your mom for coming out of jail and even caring about her family and to want it back. I feel like a lot of times people go to jail. I don't know what she went to jail for. You don't have to share it on here. It's fine. But they come out and they just kind of, sometimes some people, not everybody, and it's like they don't know which way to turn. But she was like, she seemed, from what you're telling me, was determined to keep her family together and to try to hopefully do the best that she can do at the time. And people who come out of those positions have it harder than a, a regular person trying to get housing, trying to get a job and things like that. And I, I commend her for that. And I know it couldn't have been easy to look your kids in the face and it's like, we're going to this place, but she seemed like she wanted to keep her family together. Um, So I definitely give kudos for that. And kudos to grandma. Anybody who's out there taking care of somebody else's kids <laughs> was, granted it's her family, but still, when you're not the person who brought these people in the world and you had to put on an extra burden on yourself, that is also a lot for a person. Um. I understand the assembly line. I remember the Bronx, the new building now is in a different space. And if you don't know, that's the path where DHS, DHS shelters are in the Bronx. It's an intake center. And it does feel like an assembly line. Um, it can be scary. It can be depressing. It can be like so confused. Well, I can definitely say, even though you were so young, you said you were 16, that you saw somebody else around you who needed, who wanted food and you shared your food with you. I'm not sure at 16, I would have saw that and said, like, here, especially being in that situation, I'm like, nah, I'm already struggling as it is. I'm not sharing nah. my food. I'm not going to lie to you. It nah. wouldn't have been fair. <laughs> but... no, I understand, but I'm I'm still that same way now. Like, cause it's, I feel that way because it's food, you know? Like, it's not it's not nothing. It, it's valuable to us because it gives us nourishment. So if you don't got it right now and I know I got um, something that can help both of us, then why not? If I got a bowl of rice, I have half, you have half. That's how it should be. I think now as an adult, I would do that. But as a child, because you're that's a child. Like most, I feel like people are not gonna do that when they're children to another but, child. You know, yeah, but but it also depends on how you grow up as well, because that's that's, that's how me and all my friends are like that. And we're like that to this day, because we all come from the same situation. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes sometimes they, they mom might not have it or whatever situation you can't tell, like you don't know what people are going through. But we always made sure, as friends, me, my friends growing up, that if one of us had something, we all had something. If one had a dollar, we got 50 cents. Because we got to figure it out together. And I just, just, I guess that's just growing up in poverty, how we grew up. We always yeah. made sure we was okay with each other. Right. I definitely understand. So it was just so much layers to your story and how, like, you told about everything, right? And how you talked about being embarrassed, like, not one of your friends to know where you are, but you still had time to even hang out with your friends. Um, so yeah. A lot of times now, especially if they're younger, 
they don't have enough time because they have to go back to a shelter. Especially this. All right, if you don't know this, guys, when you, for right now, then I'm not really sure. But right now, it's supposed to be the rule. If you are living in a borough, they're supposed to give you a shelter near your borough. And at that, at this moment, a lot of times they're not doing that. They say they're doing a good job of placing people, but a lot of parents are complaining that they live in Queens, but their school is in the Bronx. To me, that's very chaotic because they want to keep their child in the same district. A lot of times parents don't switch their schools because why should a child have to switch schools because they, they, they don't have a home to go to? So if you guys, I'm putting a plug in here too. Yeah, I know um, one of our people came on before for the um, child advocate. Her name is Jennifer. If you want to her to help you with certain things or help get a child advocate for your child for different things for busing, um, education, like I'm going to say they have, I had tutoring links, things like that definitely DM me if you need help with those kind of things because it's a rule that your child should be near their school and not be traveling so far. And if not, you could also get busing to your school. Granted, the busing in New York City is not the greatest. So I would advocate getting transferred to a closer shelter towards your child's school because it just makes it life easier. You don't have to get up as early and things like that. So definitely if you need help in that area, definitely DM me. I can hook you up with the right people. And it usually happens like honestly less than a week majority of the time so please 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 take take this information and be able to help any families that you know are in shelter right now but I'm happy that you still was able to still connect with your friends and it seemed like you were in the same school because you got to see us it seemed like you could saw your same friends because you were in yeah. the same school too. so that's yeah. good. what happened was the shelter was very close to my grandma's house yeah. I, I grew up in Crown Heights and the shelter was in Bushwick so it wasn't it wasn't that fall, you know, I used to come home from school, eat some food, go hang out with my friends. Then when it was time to go, we'd just walk from my house to the to to the shelter, and it was like a good twenty thirty minute walk, and we just talked to each other and things like that. Got it. So, yeah. so I mean, is people? I want to know people in school, like a teacher's counselor. Did they know you were in shelter, or you just no? Kind of nah, I, I, well, I, they didn't know. I was very quiet. I had one teacher who who I was close to. His name was Mr. Bravina, and I used to talk to him a lot about it and just different things like that. And then he's always coming to be like, you know, sometimes you put in certain circumstances where you guys gotta grow up just a little bit. And I feel like that. I feel like talking to him and him help, helped me through certain situations made it easier for me because he was like, don't look at it as a problem, as a solution to something. You had a problem, and this is the solution. So just thug it out. And y'all figure it out. We all figure it out. You feel me? I also want to shout out the teachers and counselors and people who get underpaid. And they're doing their job plus helping to mold young minds to have a better outlook on life. And I really give a shout out to him. I forgot his name. But oh, Mr. Brazina. Yes. Thank you for being there for him and, you know, being a listening ear. Because sometimes, especially being a teacher or a counselor, you have so many other students to think about. And a lot of times, a lot of kids get, you know, they slip through the crack because of it, especially kids in shelter. Let's be honest. A lot of times um, the school, are, even though it's supposed to have certain things set up for the kid, a lot of times they don't have the funding or there's just too much kids. If you don't know in New York City, it's a lot of kids. I forgot the exact percentage. Probably we'll put it down below to have statistics behind it. But in public schools alone, I'm not talking about charter schools or other schools, public schools alone have a bunch of children in the shelter, whether there's private or public shelter in New York City. And, you know, we had an influx of migrants who came in the past, I'm going to say two and a half years or so. And they're also in the public system with not knowing the language, not having these things. So they even are under resourced in that area because they need a bit more to compare to other kids who are in um, shelters who are originally from New York City just because of the language barrier and then them usually coming with nothing to America. So, it can be a lot on families and it could be a, a lot on a lot of things. And a lot of times schools are short, short staff. Sometimes they're even therapists, they're sharing between schools. So for this person to take a time out of his day to, you know, still mold your mind and make sure you have a positive attitude about things. I really appreciate that. I'm giving shout outs today because people deserve it. I think a lot of time we talk about a lot of negative things and then people who are doing the positive don't get the recognition they actually deserve. And I want to make sure this is not just a negative place to put like stories out there and things like that. But we really highlight the people who are doing their job correctly. And then we'll say, hopefully you're doing that. 
And if you're not doing that, you could build those skills and build that attitude towards that particular thing in the future. So you said in the shelter, the floor was uneven. Um, mm -hmm. You had bunk beds. From what you saw with your siblings, do you think it affected them that much or was to be it? Honest, like, yeah. To, to be honest, I, I don't know. I never really spoke to them about it. I never like sat down have a conversation with my sister or my brother about it. But I feel like my little brother was probably too young to even realize what was going on. But I, I never had a conversation with him about the situation. I was the oldest, so I, right. I, I looked at things a little different, you know? You know, I'm going to be all the way honest with you, too. Um, being in that situation made me a little resentful. Like, I used to argue with my mom about it and, and just be angry about certain situations because I'm like, I don't want to be here, but now I got to be here. It, it makes situations hard. But that was only that was that I speak to my to my siblings about it, but I know I had a big problem with it, like a big problem. Do you talk to your mom now, or yeah, yeah, no, nah, me and my mom, me and my mom talk now. Like we 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 have a a, a good relationship. Like my mom, my mom, my best friend. That's nice. Do you like? Do you resent her now, or just only then at the time you resented her? At, at the time, because. I, I didn't know better, you know? I right. just thought she was being selfish. When you get older and you see the bigger picture, you understand everything, you know? Right. And in that moment as a kid, I was being selfish because I couldn't see what she was seeing. Right. But that's about it. How long did you stay in the shelter? To be honest, it wasn't that long because one day, um, we probably did it for like a couple months and there was a, a security guard that used to see us come in every day and the one particular day, he was just like, yo, it's the weekend. You guys, y'all don't have to come back at 9. Y'all could come back at like 11. I'm going to be here. I'll let them know you something at 9 or whatever the case may be. So we go back outside. We come back at 11.30 or whatever. We go to the room. A couple of days go past. Next thing I know is a notice on the door saying that we got to leave because we broke the rules of the curfew. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, so we wasn't there for that long wasn't there for that long but I think everything probably just happened for a reason because what ended up happening was we had to move back in with my grandma and like a couple months after that the building that my grandma lived in the management called my mom for her own apartment oh that's nice so she 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 she, she had she won she got what she wanted and then the way I got what I wanted to because I get to stay where I grew up at with my friends and things like that got it in this time, was your mother working or not working? No, she wasn't working. Like, she had, like, little odd jobs. Like, she had babysitting, you know, do people hair, things like that. She didn't really have a job at the time. Got it. What's one thing you would like to tell people who are young? Because you went through this, and you're, now you're an adult, right? But what do you like to tell them and what they should understand about situations like this? Um, If you're going through the situation with your parents, just give them grace. Be aware and just ask questions and see how you can make some things easier for them as far as, you know, like helping out with like your siblings and things like that. Because just like it's hard for you, it's hard for them. And if y'all don't communicate with each other, y'all won't know what's going on. But if, if, if your parent doing this to get out of a situation that's bad for them, then by all means, help them out. That's basically all I got to say. That's some good words. I can honestly say that. And teens, if you are listening, I'm not sure how much how big our teen base is, but if you're a parent who is listening to this, make your teen listen to this and see from the perspective of a person who actually dealt with this as a child, you know? And also there's a thing in New York City, if you're listening to this, I'm sorry for the other states, but they might have it in your state. Just all you gotta do is Google it. It's, I wanna say it's called Better Help. I'm not I'm not getting paid for this. I'm just giving trying to give you resources that could probably help your child. Is I want to say I want to say counseling or therapy because he knows different depending on what degree you have and things like that. And I'll probably not probably my editor will help me put it down in the link below. Is for teens in New York City to be able to have somebody to talk to because if you don't know, a lot of schools don't have the proper resources for kids to talk to. But I want to say they do talking and I want to say texting and it's free. It's not like something you have to pay for and have all these things, but they want to make sure that you have an outlet to speak on it because a lot of different times kids, especially in shelters nowadays, end up in situations because they're like, 
I can't deal with this. They run away from the shelter from their parents and they get in other things and they get groomed to, and end up in certain other lifestyles that honestly they don't belong in, but they don't know what to do because it's like, I don't want to be here. What else can I do to get out of here? And there's a lot of other things happening in shelters right now and gangs and stuff. You'd be thinking like, how do you, gangs are everywhere in New York City and honestly, probably the US in general, honestly over the world, but it looks different in every community. But just talk to your children, like Kay said, um, and make sure you have that open communication. I know it can be hard as parents to open up to your child, especially when things are going rough. But remember, they're going through this with you and their minds are not even developed yet. And if you don't help them, help break it down to them and make them understand why things happen. And people going to shelter or having evictions, housing insecurities, for all different reasons, you know what I'm saying? And New York City, especially, is a hard place to rent things from and get things from. And two-bedroom apartments are in high demand. And because of that, it can be hard for people. And especially if you don't work enough money and you have multiple kids, it can be very hard. Make sure you look up a lot of resources, parents. They have a lot of resources in New York City. I know HRA can be a pain. It might take about three months to get something, <laughs> but when you get it, you get it. Usually food stamps go a little bit faster, especially if you don't have a job and things like that. But please go to the resources. They have one-shot deals. They have, I want to say, it's called enhanced one-shot deals. I want to say it's three or four months worth of rent. They have different ones you can um, do, get um rent arrears up to a certain amount. I want to say it's 10000 maybe more. I don't know if, the, if they have a new um, amount, but they have all these services in New York City. That they... But the problem, the problem is people don't know how to get to them, or how to use them, that's and true. things like that. Like I, I feel like it's so much things that's going on, but there's no awareness because people don't know how to promote it. Right, and that's why I do the podcast to make sure that you know how to get these things. Um, access HRA. If you just, or if you Google HRA, um, human resources and see where the local one is next to you. You could do everything online too. If you don't know how to use the, the phone or the things, you know, call 311. But I feel like if you listen to this podcast, you probably can use the computer just a little bit or use you know, your smartphone just a little bit. But if you don't, DM me and I will text now you and I will help you go through the process. I work with different organizations that help. I work with um, Healing Hands. They do domestic violence and trafficking. I do not like work, work. I volunteer there to help people with different things. And I work with Family Homeless Coalition, which, you know, sponsored this podcast to make me make sure that the resources people can get in their hands. Because it's like Kay said, there's a lot of resources, but people don't know how to get to it. And that's why I bring people on from different organizations who do these things. Again, I know Canva, which is a home basis. Canva, Catholic Charities, other home bases in New York City. It does take a long time to go through those processes. But honestly, even though it takes a long time, it's worth it. And I know that because I've done these processes and it's annoying going back there and not getting an appointment. And I know most of my stuff that I've done was before COVID. So I know it's even worse to get them now, but it's worth it when you actually get what you need. Um, if you need WIC for your child, Google it, 311 it. Um, some hospitals have them in there. There's so much pantries if you need food. If you need domestic violence help, DM me, DM me. I can help you get with organizations that can help you with this stuff. New Destiny is on here. They help with um enterprise, help with building houses. New Destiny help with DV and making sure you can be a survivor and a thriver. You know what I'm saying? They have, we're going to be having coming up, probably I'm not sure if it's before or after this path, um, podcast, Sisters in Purple, they help with these things too. There's so many things. And if you look at our resource, we have a resource packet, right? Go in there and we have it, everything in a different category, guys. And look what's the category for you. If you need legal help, if you need these things, look what works for you and call those numbers. That's why we put it together because there's so much things out there, but people don't know which one is good, which one is bad, which one is this and that. And if you don't know, guys, DM me. I'm on the internet all the time. I'm here to help you. Granted, I don't have a thousand hours in the day. But right now, we're so small that I can help you much faster than probably other organizations can who has so many people who are they have to work for at one time. So this is my job. I'm I'm happy to give resources. And when I first started doing this, I didn't know as much, but now I'm growing, going to different seminars. I'm helping doing policies, these things, to be make sure that you can get what you need to be better. If you're also out here and you need housing help, you can get um, FEPS, which is FEPS for the community. 
Also, get it from home base. You have to go three on one or go Google home base and you can put in your information, your um zip code and things like that. There's so much resources, guys. Please just don't sit on it and just like, they can't help me. I'm not, please get it. You'd be surprised how much things you can actually qualify for. Um, But yes, I, I really appreciate you, Kate, for coming on and telling your story. And I don't know, do telling your story now or talking about it, thinking about it, does it affect you now as an adult or you're like, it just happened and it's just molding me into who I am today? It don't it don't affect me as an adult. I just feel like it was something I had to go through, you know, to to make me who I am. Right. But but sometimes other I I I can only speak from my experience, but I I I don't know. But I feel like if the kids are going through what I went through, I feel like they would want somebody to talk to to let them know that it's okay. Because one thing somebody gonna respect and and they and they're gonna understand is somebody that comes from the same situation they come from. Right. You know, if I, if I had that a little bit more, I probably would have been a little bit more understanding. With the whole situation, do you think you would like to do work like that, and to help yeah. people like yeah, you? Yeah, I, I, I used to do something like similar to that. I used to be, I used to, I used to do a nonprofit at like Adam Gleason Gym, where we give kids the chance to learn how to box and for free. They don't pay anything; they just come to the gym and show up, and we just train them. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a good program for me. It kept me off the street because I came up through the program. Right. Uh, I I, bo I boxed through the program. I met a lot of awesome people that wanted to see me do good in life. I met a lot of um, fighters that I used to see on TV. They would come to the gym and hang out with us and show us a bunch of things. It was a great program. I'm 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 willing to help and learn and, and teach these kids, teach children, not these kids, because just teach children how to um, navigate being young and figuring it out. Because I ain't have nobody to help me do it. And if I can help them, then then why not? Right, that's definitely true. That is right. That's very good, guys. Thanks for the, another shout out. Thanks to any programs that can help under I'm gonna say underprivileged or just help kids keep keep off the street. They idle minds, you know. We gotta make sure we have the kids hands on on doing different things. It don't have to always be a theater program or this program, but he he said boxing. You know, it could be something tennis. They have different programs out there that could keep kids off the street. And to help them just keep their self focus on something, just having something to focus on sometimes can be all the world of good. And I'm happy that we have programs like that. We need a bit more. And um, um, people just need to have the word out. I think that's what it is with a lot of these programs. I feel like there's a lot of programs out there like this. People just don't know about it. Like, again, just like the resources. So, guys, yeah. you have any last words for the people? No. Nah, um, just, <laughs> just stay positive. Keep doing what you're doing and just enjoy your days and just be happy for them. Guys, we are at the end of the podcast. I really appreciate you coming on. Please follow us on social media, on TikTok, on YouTube, on Instagram. And you, if you go, you know, follow us and share it to your friends and share it to your friends. And if you share the resource packet to see who might need it, because you'd be surprised. It could be your neighbor. It could be your coworker and they might need it. There's a lot of people in shelters right now who are working regular jobs, but they just can't afford to pay rent and they might need the resource also. So if you even are a person in a PCA, I'm going to do this in my daughter's school who needs services like these things, hit me up and probably we can get the schools more involved and to make sure that these things are out there. And they have certain things set up in school, but I feel like it's just not, people don't know how to get to it and things like that. So definitely get to me in the DMs and I'll be able to help push that along in your community. You guys are amazing and be safe and I love you. Bye.